So how do you know if your greens are clean? They don't have a de dirty residue feeling or dry like feeling on them, regardless if you're doing greens, spinach, mustard greens, collard greens, uh, uh, no matter what type of greens you use. So all of them, when they come to store, they kind of feel kind of gritty or dirty, because you know, when, if you touch it and it's, you can feel dirt, that mean they dirty. So how do you know when they're clean? Well, you know where they're clean is when uh, they're squeaky. They'll squeak. They automatically squeak. You know, some may say, "Well, they already squeak." No, it, there's a squeaky sound that uh, greens make when they're wet. That's how you know it's clean. You can hear it. And you don't feel any residue on the green. Because if it's some green, you don't, you don't feel the bug or the dried up sap that's on the green if they're dirty. That's automatically. I'm going to sit my spring mix there because I don't know what I'm going to do, but we do need to start eating more salad than we normally do. Okay, what's next? Well, I gotta put, put this in here. Water in the spinach. As you see, it has dirt on them. So I'm soaking them as well and rinsing them off. You know, you gotta really think about it. You know, the farmers handle it. The store, grocery store delivery, they deliver it and stuff gets on it. And then after them, they put it in the store and then the worker put their hands on it. Then customers put their hands on the product. So what I normally do is get a nice size pot. Since I have two bunches it sh and then I have two bunches of spinach, it's not gonna require much. But what I do is I do fill up my pot to maybe two liters of water. And I know you're saying, well, that sounds like a lot, but take a look at not. I put this two liters and I put it on boil. I add my seasoning, such as whatever seasons you like, salt and pepper, or if you like cayenne pepper, no, whatever season you choose, thyme, all of it, different seasons play a part in here. But today I'm gonna use pepper. I have cracked pepper. I'm putting it on the low, uh, in the eye that I know that cooks fast. Okay, this is my lid to the pot. And I'm going to put this soapy spinach over here and take my collard greens out. You want to make sure there's no soap on them at all, none whatsoever. You want them to have that, that crisp crunch. Let them set aside. And since we don't do ham, pork, ham hocks, or we don't do neck bones anymore, turkey bones, 
uh, turkey meat or anything like that. It, Cause uh, pretty much trying to do plant-based. And so the oils we use, either coconut oil, grapeseed oil, and other type of oils that are in the plant-based family that's not, that is required under a certain diet. All plant-based are not the same. Uh, this is a limited plant-based by Dr. Stevie. So he's gonna have uh, grape seed oil off into his greens. So that's the first thing I'm gonna put add to the pot of water. And it may be no more than two tablespoons based on me doing a two liter pot. It doesn't require a lot of oil, it does not. It's all about your seasonings. And what I normally do is I do go to a central market and I buy farmer's seasonings. I don't buy any glass anymore. If you do see them, it's because my friend may have some seasonings and I'm supportive of it. But most seasonings that I'm getting that I can't get in other stores like Tom Thumb, in yours, Walmart, and Target's like that, I can go to Central Market and buy it by the pound or ounces. This is smoked black pepper crack. I already have some off in here. I've already bought a mason jar. So what I'm gonna do is pull the rest in here because I just bought a, uh, this was $4.36. Pretty much, you get a little bit more than what you would get if you put it in a can. And one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to waste your season. So, I wasted. I'm shooting it right back in the pot. Um, seasonings count. And me just doing that alone, I'm not gonna need that much black pepper maybe half a teaspoon to my two liter of uh, water that's up in this pot i'm waiting it to boil i've added my oil and so the next thing is my sea salt i'm gonna add sea salt and it doesn't require that much most people do measurements some people just do it by sprinkling because they've been cooking for a long time and so what they do is they just automatically know the right amount of dosage on what to use. They, they know the right amount of dosage without any hesitation. Excuse my camera. You know, but, uh, don't have a professional cameraman. So since I actually wasted this amount on here. I'm gonna use this same cutting board and I'm gonna dump this sea salt because this is about a tablespoon full that fell out. It's about a tablespoon of sea salt. A lot of time I said, oh, you don't put enough salt on there. Um, Cause sometimes I can be heavy handed and I forget that um, when I was doing with meats when you do hams it's enough seasoning in there a, a salt is so salty where sometimes if you add any seasoning make it too salty if you leave it over two two or three days and that's what normally occurs when you use meats it can be make the next day if you try to go back and eat it's real salty so i'm very cautious nowadays with how much salt i put in here but I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more because I know how he is. There's not enough salt, mama. So I wanna make sure that I have enough for him. And then I bought different kinds of salts. I want you all to know. A lot of people limit their stuff because they go to the regular grocery store. But this is a Cypress Black Sea Salt. And this is Cypress Black White Sea Salt. No, these are flakes. These are the same flakes as this. And this is Espresso Sea Salt. It looks like coffee more than anything. And it smells like coffee. 
it's a, it's espresso, but it's salty. It's good for like meats, like like chickens, more like seafood. You can lean more to the seafood on there. And yeah, this is black cypress. I want to show you the flakes because the white ones are like that too. They're good decorative flakes that you can even uh, put on different kinds of meat. To, and it looks different like steaks. Oh yeah, steaks, um, lamb, roast. It's a good property. Now if I had only salt and pepper, Normally what I do is I also come with you with my bell peppers. Let me see if I can find any bell peppers. Yes. For these greens. Yellow onion. Usually we use purple onions, but I'm going to use the rest of this. And I'm going to use one jalapeno pepper. And all these vegetables are organic. So, you want to make sure your knife is sharp well. And believe it or not, you want to make sure the stickers are off. You really want to rinse it off because it does leave a residue sticky glue residue on your belt, any kind of a vegetables that you have that comes with those sticky tabs, you want to make sure you get that glue off and rinse them off. You can rinse it off with soapy water. Now, in my with my bell pepper, you know how sometimes it has this little white in there? I go on and trim it off. It ain't gonna kill you one way or another, but it just looks better. And see how I'm just slicing. No particular slice. This is part of the seasoning process before I add greens and spinach. I'm gonna put a uh, little small bit. And I never knew bell pop peppers was kind of hot and spe uh, spicy until, I, you know, I always, I think it's only there if you leave the seeds in there. But my son always said, no, mom, it's hot. The uh, bell peppers are hot. And so even though my water I'm waiting boiling, I do go on and add my seasoning. Sometimes I go on and chop these, this, these herbs up jalapenos, onions, and sometimes I don't put the seeds in here, and sometimes I do. And you just want to chop them up as much as you can. This is where most of your flavoring come from. It's in your veggies which are your seasonings. I just can't worry about, cause you know, the seeds is what make it real spicy. You, if you didn't know, the jalapeno spices because of the seeds more than anything. And what I usually do is I when I don't take time to take the seeds out, now I just don't want it. Sometimes I can just rinse and knock some of them off. Jalapenos, <clears throat> it feel like I'm eating them. 
they spicy. So I rinsed them off and it got the sea salt. <laughs> Ooh, is that the jalapeno peppers or is it the, it's the um, black cracked pepper. Both of them can make you sneeze. There's no particular way that I'm cutting this, but what I don't eat is the first two layers of the onions. Uh, sometime I just go on and peel it, peel it off and go to the next stage. I don't even deal with, you know, the, um, the uh, first two layers are really real tough a lot of times. And there's nothing wrong with it because you can use them and put them in stew, but then the everybody's like wondering well this is not a big onion so i don't my eyes is not gonna burn and it's been in the refrigerator so some of the um burning what makes your eyes watery is already probably and ran its course being out open so these are different ways to cook greens. Everybody don't cook them the same way. Okay. So I'm gonna put it on pause. I'm gonna go throw away all this extra stuff and rinse my board off and start the next process. <laughs> 